YouTube has decided to not share my videos with everyone who subscribes. Please follow me on social media to stay up to date. Okay, so we're looking at uh, Solo, Star Wars Story, uh, first reactions, uh, because the premiere just happened and people are talking about it. So, uh, oh, these aren't tweets, these are just whatever, so, okay. Uh, let's see here. Solo, Star Wars Story has held its world premiere in Hollywood Thursday, two weeks before hitting theaters nationwide, and the attendees have taken to Twitter to share their first reactions. Uh, writes IndieWire film editor Kate Erbland, it takes a bit for Solo to find its feet and for young Han Solo to turn on enough charm to make you forget he's not Harrison Ford. But she says, once it kicks in, uh, it's, hey, let's make a crew, and yes, let's also do some high stuff, it totally flies. Uprock senior and entertainment writer Mike Ryan says that the first act uh, can be uh, can can be hit and miss clunky, but a legit fantastic Donald Glover as a young Lando and the Kessel Run heist plot makes Solo a whole lot of fun. Oh, that's kind of a spoiler. The Kessel Run heist plot. That's that's entirely a spoiler. So I do apologize right there. Uh, thanks, comic book. You dick. Now, uh, comic book owns Joseph Smith says it's a ton of fun, saying it feels more like a Star Wars movie than Rogue One, probably because it was more f fanciful than it would be anything else. Um, he says, don't look up spoilers. Kind of funny. That he says, don't look up spoilers. But yet there we, we, we know that the Kessel Run is not a race, as it was previously indicated, unless I am completely off base on my knowledge. Uh, but it's 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 a heist. <laughs> uh, Angie J. Han of Mashable. Uh, says, oh no, sorry, uh, Connor here from uh, Cinema Blend says, uh, Bank on Lando, a Star Wars story getting a green light by the end of the year. Uh, it says, uh, Glover continues to be perfect. Angie Han of Mashable says that Alden Eichenreich is the real deal, uh, offering praise for uh, Fendi Newton, saying Phoebe Waller bridges L3 uh, well. Well, we'll talk about that later. I don't quite know what that means, but I have a feeling that's probably something to do with the whole take on Robot Lives Matter, which is definitely part of her character. Uh, YouTube creator Brian Tong says, I felt like I was watching Star Wars movie again. So many moments for the fans and surprises. I've got the feels after this one more than Avengers Infinity War. Now, that is a bold, bold, bold claim, uh, saying that he got more feels than Avengers. But that could also tie into the fact that with Avengers, you know, what you know, if you've seen the movie, you know what happens. But at the same time, uh, you also know that, um, that you know what's coming down the pipeline so the 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 permanence of it kind of goes away um now ign's jack jean here says that uh, she was completely floored the movie seriously holds up i was on the edge of my seat i had so much fun watching it that's a good thing yahoo's kevin uh poloi or poloi whatever says it's really good saying it's fun as hell now granted these are initial reactions coming out of the theater and upon further reflection these views could change but to give an idea of what to expect here this is not bad it's it's not people walking out saying like oh my god this is this is the worst thing ever but then again these are kind of the same people that went to the last jedi premiere six months ago and were like this is the best star wars movie of all time fans say differently but uh but we could be finding ourselves in that kind of situation as well um, now it says here, uh, from, from Yahoo, it's a straight intergalactic heist movie, kind of refreshing to see a star Wars movie without a death star or the rebellion's fate at stake. Uh, plus Alden Eichenreich is super impressive as Han, uh, but L3 might be my new favorite character. And again, they were really banking on Alden here. Uh, I know there's been lots of people that like lots of YouTube videos that have criticized him. I myself have probably criticized him. Uh, but you have to remember, this is a guy who was, who was, who was kind of like discovered by Steven Spielberg when he was 16 at a bar mitzvah or bat mitzvah, some kind of mitzvah. He was discovered by Spielberg. So he, he's kind of living like handpicked. It kind of anointed into this, so to speak, uh, simply due to Spielberg's connection with Lucasfilm. And I'm pretty sure that had a lot to do with it because Kathleen Kennedy, uh, one of her first uh, gigs as an associate producer, was, you know, working with Steven Spielberg, E.T., Temple of Doom. I mean, like, you know, she she's, knows these guys and probably took a lot of what he said to heart. Um, now, Mashable's Chris Taylor says it's good. It's so good. Uh, he says, this is the grungiest, most grunt level blue collar Star Wars ever. And I am here for it. Now that actually speaks to me in a way that I, I like, because going back to what, uh, to what Yahoo's Kevin here says, um, uh, Poloby, there we go. I think I probably said it right this time, uh, is that it is not dealing with the Death Star or Starkiller base or, or any of the equivalent of, of a Skywalker, uh, saga. And as much as I love the Skywalker saga, sometimes, you know, it, again, it's cyclical. So this, th this takes us out of it and it doesn't deal with Rogue One, which also dealt with the Death Star as well. So this is basically kind of like the first Star Wars movie to not deal with, with, with all of that. 
right? With the exception of there probably being a couple tie-ins due to the whole, you know, younger Han Solo taking place a couple years probably before the events of A New Hope, uh, also before the events of Rogue One. I would be very surprised. I should say I would not be surprised if like Cassian Andor uh, or Jin Erso makes a cameo appearance in this thing. I, I really wouldn't be su super surprised at that um, because at this point they would still probably end up being alive. Well, no, they would be alive because they weren't dead yet. So that's something to consider, too, for what's going to happen with the trilogy, because, you know, there's going to be a trilogy like they've already signed them on for three movies and they, they probably want to take these things and make them full arc storylines in order to then turn them into franchises. Um, so, uh, let's see. Chris Taylor also says that surprise and delight you out of your seat. That's okay. Uh, solo left nerdist Rachel Hine pleasantly surprised who calls the wrong Howard directed movie, a cute, fun, stylish star Wars adventure. Now that's, that's not a hundred percent, you know, like just gobbling, you know, praise there, but it's, it says, Oh, it's a cute film. So, you know, mid grade type stuff. Um, uh, Peter uh, Schiretta from Slash Film here says, feels surprisingly unlike any Star Wars movie before, yet perfectly captures the tone, adventures, characters, and humor of the Star Wars franchise. He says, I need a Lando movie in my life. Uh, he also goes on to say, stay away from spoilers, a big Marvel level uh, shit that will make you wonder where Lucasfilm is headed next. Now, that is kind of odd. Right. That that's that, that's kind of odd to me. Why? Why? Would they, why would they sit there? Why would they sit there and say, like, OK, so, so they want they want this movie to be to be huge. They want this thing to be to be big. Obviously, they're, they're going for it. Obviously, this, this is what they want. This is this is what they're going for. And it's fine with me. Uh, and then and then they're already looking at like trying to. Now, here's my question. Is this is this the springboard? Is this is this where they're going to be taking it to diverge away from Skywalker? And that is ultimately fascinating to me. It's very fascinating to me if this is going to be the case, because going forward in this regard, it's going to showcase a very different tonal change for for Lucas, because I think part of the problem when it came to The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi in terms of criticism from fans was that, again, it kind of felt in the case of Force Awakens, it felt too similar which is true. It did. In the case of the last Jedi, it, it, it went too far one direction. Maybe this is where it kind of like finds its footing. You know, this is the fourth movie released by Disney, uh, with star Wars in it. You know, people out there are kind of hot or cold on rogue one. Personally, I fucking love rogue one. Uh, I, I loved it for its grittiness for the way that they handled it. I, I thought it was fantastic. And this one kind of feels like it looks kind of the same way. Now I've been a little apprehensive on this one. We we've covered it for a, quite a while here on the channel. Uh, and, uh, I'm, 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 I'm excited reading this. I'm, I'm very, I'm very, I'm very, very excited to go see this movie in two weeks. Um, I mean, thankfully Deadpool two is next week. And then we have one more week to go to solo. So if we're, you know, if you're a movie fan and if you're watching this video, you, you probably are. Uh, you know, a good time to be around. These next two weeks are going to be pretty freaking awesome.